Hello, I'm David Mitchell, and this is my uh, video diary thing uh, for uh, the filming of Magicians. Um, and uh, we're actually about halfway through the shoot already, um, and Rob's just given me the camera, so that's why I'm starting now. Uh, this uh, We're at Nottingham Theatre Royal, where we filmed all the sort of finale stuff, and this is a dressing room there that I'm in, if I just sort of show you. That's how cool it is. And uh, in fact, I can even show you Nottingham proper. Uh, so the camera will get screwed up. But that's Nottingham. OK. And, um, yeah, we've been staying in Nottingham for a few days now. Uh, I've done most of the tricks I've got to do uh, already. Um, and I've worn the most uh, dramatic and uncomfortable costume of the shoot, which I'll show you as well. It's there. Uh, see, it says Grim Reaper. Um, Realise by swinging the camera around, I'll probably induce vomiting in anyone who's unwise enough to watch this. Anyway, so here I am. This is my lifestyle. Don't you envy it. Oh, and I'm reading uh, this. Uh, it's uh, called The Man Who Smiled by Henning Mankell. I'd, rec I'd recommend it. It's good. Um, this is uh, Ollie, the producer, and Jesse, uh, one of the writers. Uh, say hello. Hello. Say, so, yeah. Um, and uh, perhaps you could just like to say, what, what were today's uh, challenges and threats to the project? It's, uh, what's the day? It's, it's like a middle Sunday, middle... Thursday. Waiting for you, David, I think. They're waiting. Get... Uh, <laughs> the government fell. Darren Boyd had an abscess. Yeah. Um, those are the main two. Yeah. See, this is the reality that I'm too busy to have to do this. <laughs> but, you know, that's the thing about the media now. You have to screw around with DVD extras and the internet and all this bollocks. If you're watching this, you're wasting your time. Watch, an, watch the film and then watch another film. Anyway, I'm going through the motions, so... You know, now if it's all right with you, I'm going to actually go and make the film. <laughs> anyway, bye from the producer and from the writer. Goodbye. Yeah. Well, here I am sitting on the floor of my hotel room, which I find is the best way of getting the right height level of, for, the, for the lens. Um, I'm still in Nottingham. This is uh, this is my room in the hotel. that would be of interest but I've got a camera and I'm therefore empowered. Um, I've, I've had a couple of pints. Uh, it's, uh, it's 25 past 10 on the uh, 7th of um, uh, September and uh, I've got to learn my lines for tomorrow and uh, maybe answer a few emails on my laptop. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, tomorrow, early start tomorrow, to, uh, to do some more filming. Um, and, uh, it really is as simple and as boring as that. My uh, shampoo thing's run out. For fuck's sake. Who's going to fill that up? I don't know. Anyway, good night. Uh, this has been my first day of video diarying. Di diarising, diarising. And uh, I've recorded a lot of stuff, but uh, n none of it of much moment, which I apologise. Night, night. Hello, it's, um, uh, oh, this is a prop watch, so I don't say what day it is, but it is uh, Sunday, uh, and it, we're in Nottingham again. Uh, it's about half eleven, and I haven't done anything yet today, so they sent me back to my room uh, to wait for an hour until it's lunch. Um, this is my, I mean, costume, but I managed to walk through the hotel and no one said, ha, fake. So that's a uh, tribute to the costume department. Um, and I thought because I had a bit of downtime I should, I should do it, an item. Um, I found a better way of setting a camera up, now you'll notice, so I can actually sit on the bed, uh, put it on top of the telly. Um, later today we're shooting a scene uh, on a ferry, except it's not on a ferry, it's just in a room, so I imagine I'll have a camera. Doing a sort of rocking motion throughout, um, or maybe it's more subtle than that. 
I don't know, but maybe I'll uh, show a bit of the non-ferry in order to reveal the magic behind filming. Um, anyway, uh, that's all from me for now. Hello, it's me, I'm Robert Webb. Uh, I play uh, Carl in the film Magicians. Um, so this is my video diary. So, hi. So, um, I've made a little, I've made a little list of things I should talk about down here. So every now and again I'll go, mm, and then that'll be me finding out what to do next. You probably won't want to use that bit. I mean, it's gold. I mean, clearly, you know, from, from the start, it's been all gold but you might not want that bit. I don't know. So, um, yeah, it's a film about magicians, and David and I had to learn a few magic tricks. And um, David's been given a whole load of really easy stuff, um, which he's managed to do. I was given loads of really hard stuff, which, um, just unfairly, because I've been treated unfairly, which I wasn't able to master. And in fact, in some circumstances, in some instances, I mean, I, I just gave up. So they gave me, like, I, I was supposed to do a coin roll, which is like, you take a 50p, you place it on, you have to bend, bend the knuckle, that's a tip, that's the first tip. And then I spent four weeks practicing this, and the idea is to get the coin to roll gracefully across your knuckles, pass it under, and, and then transfer it, and it goes round in a little circle. After four weeks, this is how well I can do it. You see? and it dropped on the floor, and it always drops on the floor. That's what happens. So they said, don't do that, because you can't do it. And instead, um, I have to do I do a little card fan. I produce a card from behind someone's ear. Ooh, maybe I could do it. Should I try, try and do that? Produce a card from behind someone's ear. I'll try and produce a card from behind your ear. Although, you know, here's a normal playing card. For all you know, I've got another one blue tacked over there. But let's just, you know, just bear with me. Oh, you seem to have something over here. Oh, look, I've produced a card. That was shit, wasn't it? Wasn't that shit? Didn't that look shit? D don't use that bit. Uh, and what else did I do? No, I, I, I do nice fan cards. I'm not going to do that because, you know, I, I just want you to see the, the version that's in the film of that because I can't do it very well very often. What am I, a fucking magician? But I did, I did, uh, there was a bit where, one thing I was quite pleased with, there's a bit where Carl has to become very adept at throwing a miniature basketball over his right shoulder so that he can get the spirit sphere to land in the right place in the audience. And then there's a scene where I'm practicing that and I have to get it in a basketball hoop. And in order to accomplish this feat, I mean, it's not a magic trick, it's a feat. It's a feat. But in order to try and get this in a manner that didn't use up um, £5,000 worth of film stock going to the 28th take, me missing, I, on a day off, I came in and practiced doing that for a couple of hours, and that's what I did. I mean, it's not, it's not exactly like Keanu Reeves spending three months to learn karate or kung fu or sword fighting, but it, you know, it is a bit like that. It's a bit like that. I mean, it's not like that. It's not like learning kung fu. It's, it's a bit like it. It's a bit like that. So, and so I did that, and then, uh, and then I got it on, like, the fourth take, so I was very, I, you know, I was very pleased with myself. I remain quite pleased about that. I think about that when, when other things are wrong in my life. I think about that moment. Um, other magic stuff. That's most of the magic stuff I've had to do. At one point I was going to, like, produce a, a, a champagne cork from, from in, inside my hand. They, I better not tell you how they do that, it's pretty fucking obvious. It's certainly obvious when you see me do it. But they, they decided not to use that either, because it got in the way of, um, of, of the action, not because I wasn't doing it very well. Um, I'm just consulting my list. It says naked stuff, yes. Well, this being a, a British comedy film, obviously at some point I'm required to take off all of my clothes. Um, that seems to be the law at the moment. Um, but luckily, um, uh, Carl, uh, unlike the character I play in Confetti, in Confetti, uh, an inferior British comedy of 2006, um, I, don't, I mean, I don't know that, but, you know, Magicians isn't... I haven't seen the finished version of Magicians. We haven't even finished making the unfinished version. 
but you know the odds are it's going to be funnier because um, the difference being a funny script deliberately written to be funny, i.e. there is one. Um, so in Confetti I was playing a naturist, whereas luckily with Carl, uh, when he gets locked out of his hotel room naked, he reacts like normal people by covering his ghoulies. Um, so that at least was a relief for me, uh, if not for the cinema-going audience. In fact, they they will be very they will be very relieved as well. So that was uh, so that was sort of interesting. It, it made a, made a change to be able to cover cover more one's ghoulies. It was um, it was a welcome break. Uh, other slightly embarrassing things I've had to do. Uh, it wasn't embarrassing particularly. I did a, a sort of love scene with um, Andrew Riseborough, who plays Danny, uh, in a very funny and talented way. Uh, we spent a day um, snogging in a bed. Um, really, no headlines there apart from she farted. She farted, and she calls herself a professional. I didn't fart. And would not. Uh, stage stuff with all. Oh, uh, other moments of total humiliation. Um, observant friends, fans, and enemies alike will have noticed I'm, I'm slightly balding. I'm balding. In fact, I'm, I'm going completely bald. I'm going to be a bald fucker. And uh, this becomes crucial in that uh, Harry, uh, Carl, my character, towards the end of the film, puts his head in a guillotine and gets his head chopped off. Now, I can exclusively reveal, this is a spoiler, don't listen to this if you haven't seen the film, I can reveal, it, it looks like Carl gets his head chopped off. But actually, he doesn't get his head chopped off. And I didn't get my head chopped off. But in order to achieve that, they need a dummy head. So, basically, there was a process where they got the dummy head to be as bald as me. And they had to make sure that the pattern of the baldness of the dummy matched my baldness and so there were some brilliant moments where I basically had to get on my hands and knees next to the bald dummy head in the guillotine so they could compare which one was the most bald and whether it was the right amount of bald and brilliantly uh, during the final camera test it turned out I had slightly more hair than the dummy so the dummy was wrong because it was even balder than me so Another great buttress added to the great cathedral of my self-esteem there. That was a good day. Uh, hello. Another day, another hotel room. And now it's not Nottingham anymore. We're in Skegness. Yes, we're in Skegness. We've been filming um, on the beach in Skegness. One of the scenes we did was uh, the scene where Carl gets buried up to his head in sand, up to his neck in sand, um, which... I think was probably quite a good scene. I don't know, haven't seen it. What they did basically, it wasn't enormously comfy. They, they dug a hole in the sand, they put a big wooden crate in the hole, uh, they put a stool uh, at the bottom of the crate, I sit on the stool, they put a couple of live rats in the box, they put the lid on, they cover the lid up with sand, and then I sort of do the scene with David. I was trying to stamp on the rats um, before they bite me. And it seemed to go quite well. Um, it wasn't very comfy, you know, the sun's kind of beating down, wind blowing, sand in your face, the rats trying to bite you on the ankles. But, you know, there's, of those three things, there's nothing you can really do about, about it. I mean, you know, sometimes as an actor, you're just going to be a bit uncomfy. I suppose they could have they could have put a brolly to kind of keep the sun off my head a bit. Um, but there's nothing you can do about the wind. Obviously, you've got to have the rats in the box. So, generally, um, it was good. But it feels like a, a sort of funny... It feels like a funny scene where I'm buried up to my neck in sand. It has a sort of whiff of chat show clip about it. I can imagine them using that as a clip because it just looks good. Apparently at one point I was in, in the box fending off the rats and uh, a trailer, no, not a trailer, a trawler, a boat went by sort of in the horizon behind my head and everyone said that looked funny. I've got to take their word for it. I don't know. Every now and again, the producer or the director come up and they go, I've seen the rushes from a couple of days ago, it all looks great, we've got to trust these people. We've got to trust these people, I don't know. I don't know if it looks good, we could be making an absolute turd. But I do trust these people, basically. I basically trust these people. Um, it was their idea about the rats, but I think that added to, it must have added to the scene, otherwise why would they do that? Why would they do that? They don't want me to be needlessly uncomfortable, do they? So, yeah, 
Um, other things we did in Skegness, uh, we did some filming in Butlins, Butlins uh, holiday camp. Um, I mean, I'm from Lincolnshire, I'm from round here, and, you know, if you ever hear me going on about my working class credentials, and I hope you don't very often, bear in mind, you know, we didn't have much money, we did have holidays in Skegness, but fuck me, we drew the line at Butlins. But even when I was not when I was nine, Skegness was basically the best place in the world. Uh, and Cannon and Ball, I, I didn't expect to see anything funnier than Cannon and Ball. And I may have changed my mind about both of those things. But Skegness is still, I'm very fond of Skegness, but Butlins, Butlins though, Butlins. We did the sub trunk routine and um, uh, it's two days later and after having done a bit of a leap up onto a box six or seven times two days ago, I can still barely walk from stiffness. And that's some kind of indication to me I should do something about my well-being. Maybe I should take up something like swimming or, or rat stamping in a, on a more competitive level. Um, can't think of anything else that's happened. Lately, mm, Skegness is not really how I remember it. I mean, I am a kind of metre taller than I was the last time I was here, so everything seems a metre less tall. And on that note... So it's day two, and uh, we're filming a scene where Harry, heard Evan Mitchell, goes to a magic shop asking for a job. And the magic shop owner won't give him a job because he killed his wife's head in a guillotine accident. Four years, killed his wife's head, killed his wife by <laughs> chopping her head off years ago in a magic accident. So this is a magic shop called Davenport, uh, and it used to be in Great Russell Street in London, up in the British Museum. Oh, and 30 crazy. years ago, I bought my first magic tricks from this shop. Have I mentioned that I was the young magician of the year at 18? <laughs> and let me show you this thing. If you come over here, I'm going to hate this, but if you come over here, there's a poster here uh, called Silly Magic. Yeah. The magic. And that man there, that man, Noel Britton, can you get real close to Noel Britton? Yeah, so Noel Britton, who is a hilarious, very, very funny comedy magician, one of my heroes, he was the runner-up in Young Magician of the Year. And next to him, if you go next to him on that poster, next to him, so the year that I won it, Noel was second. That man, that's called Scott Penrose. Scott is our magic consultant on our movie. Along here, Richard McDougall, which is a brilliant, brilliant magic magician and inventor. And Richard worked on the second series of Darren Brown. And brilliant, he was. So, do you want to explain where we are and what we're doing here today? Yeah, we're on Skegness Beach. We're not. It's not true what you just said. We're not on Skegness Beach. <laughs> Okay, I'm just we're working up. We're on we Mablethorpe Beach. <laughs> Mablethorpe is about uh, 17 miles away from Skegness. It's a very pretty beach. Tell them what scene we're doing here. You should get it wrong again. <laughs> She's even seen where the, the panthers come and attack. Oh, true. <laughs> oh, this is wrong. We're shooting this. <laughs> Sorry about this. To early and drunks. We're shooting the scene where Otto uh, digs Carl out of his hole on the beach where he's been doing a David Blaine-esque endurance stunt. Do you want to see the hole? Come on, we'll show you the hole. We've got two holes, in fact. We have got two holes. It's very impressive. Come in a little bit. have got a real hole and a fake You're seeing behind the scene, this is our version of George well, Lucas well, effects, well, basically, well, here. This is our high-tech yeah. effects. So this is the real hole. Look, and look, there's a writer in the hole. Hey! <laughs> so that's the hole that uh, he comes out of. <laughs> <laughs> he's a bigger man than me, I should have got it. Uh, look, he's Gareth, he's back out first. He's like Gareth before. So that's the real hole. <laughs> and then over there is the... Do you want me, don't you, Gareth? I've uh, just wear props here, sir. Yeah, cameras. Sam, do you want to show... show I'm, going to, I'm going to do work for the movie here, the official director work. So why doesn't so Sam show you that hole? It's how that works, why I have to ask Gareth the question. So that's the real hole. This hole is the fake hole. And obviously you can't just put an actor... <coughs> well, in a hole, we'd all like to, but it's not, not legal. <laughs> so you have to build a box. And 
as you can see, if you look inside, there's a little plastic stool there where he could sit. He could live in there. He could live in there. That's his brain, which is the idea. So, yeah, we're using this for two scenes, for Carl in the hole and also Otto in the hole later. So it's a multi-purpose actor hole. The actors get sent, so they've been naughty, but in this situation they're just acting, so that's fine.